My name is Gary DeMar. I'm president of American Vision. I never thought I would ever say that I agree with atheists about the way some Christians interpret the Bible. But on the subject of Bible prophecy, these atheists are right. The group American Atheists is planning a rapture party on May 21st and 22nd for heathens and skeptics. They're advertising the event on a billboard. Here's the message. The rapture. You know it's nonsense. 2,000 years of any day now. Learn the truth at our rapture party, May 21st to the 22nd. What do the atheists get right? What do they get wrong? And what's the biblical way to answer them? As you may know, May 21st, 2011, Harold Camping has predicted that the end is going to take place. And he has put this on billboards all over the United States. And as a result, as you might expect, there's a, a great deal of, uh, of comment on this on radio stations. The secular media has picked it up. But the one group that has, has finally decided to do something publicly in the same way is American Atheists. And they've put up a billboard stating that this is nonsense, the rapture is nonsense, and they're going to have a rapture party May 21st to the 22nd uh, to celebrate that the fact that the end has not taken place. And I've got to say that the atheists are right on this. Uh, the atheists, uh, they, well, I should say the atheists get some things right on this because they are actually reading popular prophecy writers rather than reading the Bible. Now, this isn't to say that atheists, even after reading the Bible, are going to come to conclusions that you and I believe. But on this particular topic, uh, the Christians have been predicting the end literally for nearly 2,000 years. Every generation is the terminal generation. It's the last generation be before Jesus comes. Jesus' coming is always near. And they take these passages of near, shortly, quickly, and at hand that were obviously meant for those who first read these prophecies nearly 2,000 years ago, and they say that they apply in our day. Well, every generation has claimed this sort of thing. And so for 2,000 years, if a group of people claimed that such and such an event was going to happen very soon in your lifetime, and it never took place, I think you would have the, the, the right to say, these guys are off their rocker. Now, what does the Bible really have to say about this issue? Uh, and uh, if you read popular prophecy writers, uh, let's, let, all we have to do is go back as far as Hal Lindsey's Late Great Planet Earth, which came out in 1970. It was published by Zondervan Publishing House, and it was a huge bestseller, selling in the neighborhood of 35 million copies. And this re really eclipses the Left Behind series, which with its 16 uh, volumes that have come out since 1995, probably selling in the neighborhood of 80 million. Lindsay's book sold 35 million copies, a single book. And what did it predict? It, it said that uh, Israel becoming a nation again in 1948 was prophetically significant. And then, and then uh, Hal Lindsay went to Matthew chapter 24, verse 34, where Jesus says, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. And he said that was a 40-year period. And so he added 19, uh, 1948 to 40, you got 1988. And so he predicted that really everything was going to come to a close in, not before 1988. Chuck Smith in 1979 in a year-end message took the same scenario and, g and gave this, uh, uh, this uh, sermon based upon the coming of Halley's Comet, uh, which was going to be coming in the next few years. And he was talking about how this was the fulfillment of the book of Revelation. Uh, we had Edgar Wisnett in 1988 who came out with the book 88 Reasons Why the Rapture is in 1988. Now, Wisnett was kind of off the scale, but Lindsay and Chuck Smith were two very prominent and popular Bible teachers who are still out there today teaching very similar things, although they've gotten rid of the date setting aspect of things. So skeptics come along and said, look, you guys have predicted this over and over and over again. You claim the Bible says Jesus coming is near. He hasn't come for 2,000 years. What's up with all of this? Now, these modern skeptics aren't the only ones who have been questioning this, this sort of idea. You can go back to Bertrand Russell, and, and he wrote a, a short article, and he talked about why he wasn't a Christian. And one of the reasons was he went to the New Testament. He saw that Jesus predicted in Matthew 16, 27, and 28, Matthew 20, chapter 24, verse 34, stating that he was going to come in some capacity, in some way, before the last apostle died, 
Matthew 16, and before this generation passed away, Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. And you go to John's Gospel, John chapter 21, Jesus even intimates that He's going to come back in some way before the last apostle dies, that is John. And so the skeptics read the Bible, and if you can read the Bible, and if you were the first time reader of these prophetic passages, you would come to the same conclusion. Now, if you read popular prophecy writers, they try to get around these passages. This generation really doesn't mean this generation. It means, oh, the generation that sees these signs, even though the text doesn't say that. Some say it means actually that generation, or it means this race will not pass away. The problem with all of these interpretations is, is that the text doesn't state any of that. It simply says this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. And every time Jesus used the phrase, this generation, He always meant it to refer to the generation to whom He was speaking. Look it up for yourselves. The skeptics have done it. They can see it. They're not stupid. They may be unbelievers, but they're not stupid. They understand what the text says. Christians have been trying to get around these very specific texts by, by um, really saying, well, Jesus didn't really mean that. It, does, it means this. We need to look at this sort of thing over here. You don't have to do that. Jesus promised to come back before that generation passed away. Come back in what way? Come back in judgment against Jerusalem. The very thing he was talking about in the Olivet Discourse, which occurs in uh, Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. This is why the New Testament uses the words near, shortly, and quickly. Look at James chapter 5, verses 7 through 9. It's obvious that they expected some great eschatological event to take place in their lifetime. Let the Bible speak for itself. There's no, way, there's no reason why we have to apologize for this. That's exactly what Jesus predicted. That's what the New Testament writers understood Him to mean. And, it, and Jesus came in judgment against Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, just like He said He would do. And this is against the backdrop of Old Testament prophecies where we see the same type of language being used. There's no reason why we have to apologize for the Bible and we can have a, an exact answer to the skeptics on all of this. Now, you say, wh how, why is this so important? It's a p important in an apologetic way. The authority of the Bible is at stake here. Jesus' words are at stake here. If Jesus is wrong about this one thing, then maybe He's wrong about other things as well. And so if we don't get this right on something that is so clear in the Bible, there are other things in the Bible that we're not going to get right. And we can see, I mentioned Bertrand Russell, but there have been others uh, who have lost their faith over this eschatological issue. Bart Ehrman, uh, who writes seemingly a, a book every year denouncing some aspect of the Christian faith. And then when you, when you read his story, uh, he was an evangelical. He went to an evangelical college. And it was over this eschatological issue, after, over the prophecy issue, that Bart Ehrman began to question the validity of the Bible. And this is, again, very, a very important issue for Bart Ehrman. Uh, unfortunately, just like many Christians and just like these atheists are putting up this billboard, Bart Ehrman didn't look at all of the facts. He didn't look at all of the history of interpretation about this. Uh, older commentaries, when they went to Matthew chapter 24, they said this is obviously a, a, uh, a prophecy re uh, regarding the coming of Jesus and judgment against Jerusalem. Irma never even mentions this uh, in, in any of his books. And then there is a new book out by um, Vincent Bugliosi. And in, in this particular book, he asks the same question. He says, look, the Bible says Jesus' coming is near. How near? Bugliosi says, very near. And then again, he starts uh, pretty much outlining the modern day Christian perspective on Bible prophecy, never having any idea that there's a, a, a much better interpretation of the prophecy. Take Jesus at His word. Jesus was referring to events leading up to and including the destruction of Jerusalem that took place in A.D. 70. Uh, so all of this can, can really go away and we can take one of the kind of the nails in the coffin of, of, of atheism uh, by simply stating, yes, Jesus promised to come back before that generation passed away, and you know, He did come back, just like He said. In fact, uh, there's a debate between Christopher Hitchens, the, the anti-theist, and Douglas Wilson. And in that particular debate, Douglas, uh, um, Christopher Hitchens uh, challenges uh, Douglas Wilson on this, the, the, idea, the very thing in Matthew chapter 24. 
And Doug Wilson comes back and says, no, Jesus said he was going to come back before that generation, and sure enough, he did. That particular prophecy deals with the destruction of Jerusalem in A.D. 70. And you can watch the DVD collision. You can see that Hitchens does not have an answer for it because he had never heard that interpretation before because he has been reading and paying attention to what modern-day prophecy writers say about this particular topic. So you can trust the Bible. You can trust what Jesus has to say about the Bible by just going to Scripture, comparing Scripture with Scripture. Near means near, shortly means shortly. This generation means the generation to whom Jesus is speaking. The billboard that the atheists are putting up, it's no big deal. It's unfortunate that they are reading too much uh, modern prophecy literature rather than reading the Bible. If you found this particular message uh, intriguing, you may not agree with everything I've said about this, I want to challenge you to come to American Vision's Prophecy Conference. It will be held at, in Asheville, North Carolina at the Ridgecrest Con Conference Center. Um, all the lodging and the food is right there at the Conference Center. And we are going to be dealing with this whole issue of Bible prophecy June 1st through June 4th. There will be plenty of time to ask questions. You'll be able to talk to the speakers. Uh, so this would be a great time to, to restudy this issue. You may have your mind made up. You may not. You may have found what I've said intriguing. It may have made you mad. Come to the Prophecy Conference. If you'd like more information about the Prophecy Conference, you can uh, go to www.americanvision.org, americanvision.org, or call 1-800-628-9460.